colleagues, welcome back to the office. It's Steve and welcome to the CPE Today podcast. We're going to get started with our podcast presentation here just in a moment. But before we do, I'd like to share some insight on how you can receive credit for watching today's presentation. There are two options. You can either watch live as it's being recorded through Zoom, more on that here in a moment, or you could be watching or listening on demand wherever you happen to receive content. We distribute our show through YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, our website, and many other places. Now, if you happen to be watching on demand on your own schedule, after watching or listening to today's class, head on over to cpetoday.com and locate today's course page. Uh, you can find our course code by looking at the footer of the presentation to see the link presented there. And it will also be mentioned throughout the presentation on multiple occasions. After com purchasing today's class, you'll complete a short five question quiz on what was discussed in today's presentation. And upon passing that your certificate for your CPE credits will be automatically generated and available for download. In addition to your purchase, you can also download copies of today's presentation, learning materials. You can ask the presenter questions and more. Now, if you happen to be watching live as it's being recorded through Zoom, your attendance will be confirmed through attendance prompts, which will occur every 12 to 20 minutes and approximately four per hour. They'll pop up automatically. And when a prompt comes up, please choose a response to confirm your attendance. It doesn't actually matter what you choose as long as you choose something as your response will confirm your engagement with our presentation. Attendance prompts might not be announced, so please keep an eye out for them. Now, as long as you've com uh, completed at least 75% of the attendance prompts, you will receive full credit for our presentation. Your completion certificate will be delivered to you by email within two business days of the event. You can always visit cpetoday.com if you have any questions or issues with your certificate. After our presentation today, we'd love to know what you think. Uh, there will be a course evaluation that will automatically pop up. It should take you anywhere from one to three minutes to complete, and your feedback will be used to help us produce better content in the future. Now, if you have any questions or comments throughout the presentation, we'd love to know what they are. Please use the chat or the Q&A functionality to let us know what you think, or if you have any questions on the materials that are being presented. Also, please feel free to share your experience, knowledge, and insight with the class. If you have any technical issues, you can also use that functionality to ask for help. You can always find great content at cpetoday.com. We have a variety of self-study and live courses from all topics, accounting, audit, personal development, Excel, QuickBooks, and more, you name it. Check out cpetoday.com. And the CPE Today podcast is made available Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific. And you can always find great content being discussed in that podcast every single week. If you happen to be a new user, listener, viewer of the CPE Today podcast, thank you so much for coming. Welcome. We're ecstatic and happy to have you. How about you get a free credit on us? Use coupon code one free podcast at checkout to get a free credit for today's class. We're going to go ahead and get started with our presentation here in the podcast today. Thank you so much for being here and enjoy our presentation. Welcome to our class. This is K2's Business Intelligence featuring Microsoft Power BI Tools. My name is Steve Yoss. I'll be your instructor and presenter for today. You should be hearing me. Um, and if you could see me, if you could see the screen, if you couldn't, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and open up that chat box and shoot me a message so that I know that you are connected and that you are good to go. There we go. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Steve. Great name, by the way. Really good name. Uh, Mary, Linda, Scott, Janet, also good name. That's my mom's name. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to have a great day today. I'm really excited and uh, looking forward to presenting this material for you. Um, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, something I always enjoy talking about, which is business intelligence and reporting um, for lots of different reasons, which we're going to go ahead and talk through uh, today. But uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy lives to come on and, and learn something new with us and, and to be able to go through and, and experience uh, some business intelligence. Um, we're going to be looking at a lot of different things today, including uh, Power BI. 
Now, this class uh, has a number of learning objectives uh, that we will be going through. Uh, we're going to be mostly discussing different methods and manners for you to be able to do business intelligence inside your organization. There are so many different ways that you can handle this, whether you be doing it through uh, dashboards, through Power BI, whether you be doing it through different analysis and, and analytics in Excel. Uh, so many different opportunities. And today, uh, we are going to first kind of start with a discussion with respect to what business intelligence is, its value and importance, and why you should be considering this for your organization. Uh, we're then going to go ahead and talk about some different methods and manners that you can do BI inside of Excel. Uh, I'll point out there are some sample files and materials that are available to you uh, that you should have already downloaded. And if not, I would go ahead and encourage you to do so. Um, that we'll walk through. And we're going to be looking at a lot of different things inside of Excel uh, that you can consider using, which is a great way of getting started with business intelligence inside your organization. And then we'll talk about extending uh, Excel with some specific business intelligence tools that you might want to consider uh, utilizing. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and spend a fair amount of time talking about Power BI. Uh, Power BI, if you're not familiar with it, is Microsoft's business intelligence platform. And it is the gold standard as it relates to BI for so many different reasons. And it, it is an incredible tool. It's a very approachable tool. It's my personal favorite tool for doing business intelligence work for a lot of different reasons. Um, it's a free tool for individual use. So if you go to powerbi.com, you can download a copy of it. And I would encourage you to do so because we're gonna need to do it a little bit later on today. And uh, it doesn't require a Microsoft license, doesn't require an Excel license. And it's a great way of getting started. And besides being a free application, it's actually the best. You know, if we look at the magic quadrants from Gardner, which analyzes different applications and determines, you know, kind of where the leaders are in a particular space, Power BI, it's the leader. And on top of that, it's a free solution that you can get started with. And very rarely do those two things come together. But for a lot of different reasons, I'm going to show you why I love Power BI. I'm going to walk you through a lot of uh, topics here from ways of importing in your data, ways of uh, uh, configuring your dashboards. We're going to create a bunch of dashboards together uh, and more. I'm also going to share with you, although I will try not to get too technical with you, uh, some database knowledge. Uh, frankly, um, once you start getting with, started with business intelligence, you're really going to need to know how to use a database effectively. And so today we're also going to talk about some of the database principles that I think are really important for you to be able to operate uh, effectively, including things such as joins and cardinality and uh, you know bringing database tables into Power BI and mapping them and relating them together and kind of what all that means. Well, folks, this is our starting point. We can take this conversation any number of directions. In fact, we probably will. Uh, I got a couple of things I'd really like to ask for you. First and foremost, uh, I would like to ask, does anybody have any specific things they'd like to hear about today or are interested in learning about today? Or do you have any specific frustrations with Excel as it relates to your business reporting or Power BI? Uh, if so, I'd love for you to open up that chat box, shoot me a message, let me know what you're interested in today, and I will do my best to try to accomplish that and at least discuss it uh, in our class. So what do you want to learn about? You know, we're going to be here for eight hours. Uh, let's make the most of your time, make the most of my time. Tell me what you're, what you're interested in, and I'll do my best to try to incorporate that into our presentation. And the second is going to be engagement. Uh, personally, I love questions. My absolute favorite part of teaching. Um, nothing makes me happier, honestly, when I see people asking questions. And I'm more than happy to ask, answer any questions you have as we work throughout today. Um, so if you do have questions, please don't feel like you just have to sit there in silence. Um, open up the chat box. Shoot me a message. Let me know. I'm happy to do a demo again. I'm happy to... Uh, Talk about how this might be uh, applicable to your business, your industry. You know, if you need to see something uh, a second time, you know, a different demo, I'm happy to do so. Uh, throughout the presentation, we're going to be flipping back and forth between PowerPoint. I will do my best to um, I'll do my best to um, uh, zoom in so you can see the details of where I'm clicking and how I'm clicking on things and what boxes I'm on. Uh, but if you have questions, please, I, I'm solely here for you. Whatever you need, let me know. 
All right, so looking at some of the feedback that folks have popped up, thank you again. Mary's excited about learning about Power BI. Absolutely, Mary, we will definitely uh, be talking a fair amount about Power BI as well. Janet's interested in integration with ERP solutions. Good call, Janet. I'm gonna talk about a couple of different ways that you can handle that. And good news, I actually have a brand new learning resource and training um, tool that I actually built myself over the last about month um, that I'm going to debut with you guys and you'll be able to try it out and it's to emulate what it's like working with an ERP system. And so uh, it'll show you the mechanics of what it's like to pull your data down uh, from the cloud. Now, what we could do is we can select this and then we can go over here and we can choose this smart narrative option. And what the smart narrative option is going to do is it's going to analyze the data for us and it's going to attempt to provide some summary information on why things are the way they are. So let me just go ahead and make this bigger, too big, too big. There we go, okay. And it starts to analyze and kind of pull out those key indicators here. So, uh, and as we click on things, it will adjust and modify our uh, data um, and it will update its narrative. So like right now we can see here at $2.7 billion, no discount had the highest sales amount and was 967% higher than the European blah, blah, blah. And as we start to click these things, we'll actually see some additional insight as brought in. So if we were to add additional stuff over here, so as an example, let's grab from our categories. Let's go ahead and grab our subcategory names and drag this on top. Okay. That might just be a little too much here. And let's pull our Let's go ahead and pull out our promotion name. Let's take a look at it in the context of categories just themselves. Okay, same thing. It will start to analyze this and write a little narrative about what we about what we're analyzing here. And we're going to go ahead and oh no, that's in the wrong place. Let's put you here. Okay, duh. Okay, and let's do our smart narrative. It'll attempt to provide some context for us. Uh, and some of those key insights with respect to what might be helpful for us to know. So at 1.3 billion, camcorders had the highest sales amount, and it was 3,500% higher than BCD and DVD sales, blah, blah, blah. Camcorders were counted for 16%. And you could fine tune these things too, to kind of get some more insight with respect to what you are looking for. Now, if you add a slicer on top of this, so let's grab our, um, let's grab our date. And let's go grab our fiscal year name. Fiscal year, where are you? Calendar year. Okay, well, I don't know why it's not showing that. Uh, fiscal, fiscal. Oh, fiscal year. Okay. All right, we'll drag you over here and we're going to go ahead and turn this into a slicer. We can narrow this down by year as well. And those slicers are automatically going to update those smart narratives as well. So pretty cool in terms of some of the AI capabilities uh, that are present inside of the underlying application. Okay, you also have the key influencers as well. And this is gonna help pull out, um, it's also gonna help pull out and help you understand your data as it um, and explain it for you. So we pick something that we wanna analyze here. In this particular instance, let's go and grab our total cost. So we're gonna ask it to analyze our total cost. And then we're gonna want it to analyze it by whatever. So let's say for example here, let's go and grab our product name. So we're gonna drag that into this. It starts to run that particular analysis and we can need to potentially add a couple more things in here as well. So we're gonna grab maybe our subcategory and we're gonna go ahead and put our subcategory in here. We're gonna stack it above this, okay? And we start to get some analysis with respect to what's here, okay? 
And so here we can see, okay, what influences total costs to increase or decrease. And we can analyze this by all these different categories. So if the subcategory name is desktop, the average total cost increases by, in this particular case, uh, $2,800. Uh, let's grab, instead of costs, let's take a look at, for example, sales amount. So we'll drop sales uh, top cost out of here. Let's go ahead and grab our sales amount. We'll drop you in here. Okay, and let's see what motivates revenue. Okay, so looking at this, uh, we could, for example, understand what sales amount increases or decreases. And we could see here that when the product category is camcorders, the amount, average amount of sales amount increases $5,800. And we can see here it even created a nice little visualization for you, uh, under helping you understand that particular data. Okay, if it is SLR cameras, we could see it goes up, but it doesn't go up at that same amount listed. And we could add other stuff in here as well. So if we wanted to add, for example, our country, we could go ahead and drag that. We could go ahead and grab our continent name and we can go ahead and put that on here as well. Okay. And it starts to crunch the data and it's starting to do some pretty good analysis on this, uh, helping us understand what those key influences are inside of our data set. If we click over here to top segments, uh, we can see the different segments of our group. Okay. And uh, it will tell us here, like segment one, okay, the average sale is this, overall it's this. So in segment one here, uh, your average sales are $8,700 versus the overall sales, which are 36. So maybe you want to focus on whatever the heck segment one is. In this particular case, is selling camcorders. Why? Well, you are making a lot more money selling camcorders than you are pretty much anything else. Okay, and you can analyze other stuff in here too. So if you wanted to analyze this in conjunction with both the sales and cost, you can go ahead and do so too. So you can do one, you can do the other, you can put them right next to each other, which is really, really kind of useful. Uh, and this does a lot of the heavy lifting for you folks. So you don't have to do a lot of the statistical analysis on your own. Uh, the tool will do that heavy lifting for you. Okay, cool. We, we have covered a lot of what you can do with this. Uh, I'm always learning new things you can do here. Um, these visualizations, they all have kind of their own specific method and manner of how you do calculations. Honestly, folks, the best way of getting started here is just to get started and just try some of these things out. What I want to do in our, we got about uh, 25 minutes or so left here. What I want to do is I want to share with you a resource. I'm going to show you how it works and I want to give you um, some opportunities to get started working with some cloud data. And then we'll finish up with a little bit more information about Power BI and some of the nifty things that you can do with it. And uh, frankly, I mean, it's, it's, seem, it's seemingly endless in terms of what you, can, uh, what you can accomplish in this particular product. So let's go ahead and talk for a few minutes here about the Learn SQL service that we have set up. And then I'll show you how you can get started with this tool. And let's go ahead and have another polling question. And we've got two more after this. All righty. Now, if anybody has any questions, good time to ask. Again, we've got about a half hour left here. Whatever information uh, you're hoping for, I'm here to answer it for you. Go ahead and open up that chat box, shoot me a message, and let me know if you have anything in particular you'd like to know. All right. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about here is going to be connecting and working with cloud data. And what does it look like actually to turn the page and use this inside your business? And that's usually, you know, this, this is the part of the conversation where people are like, Steve, this is great. How does this actually work? How do we actually get this up and running in our business? Uh, and the answer is you're going to need access to your data. Okay. Now I created a resource here because I felt that working with access databases really, frankly, wasn't sufficient. It wasn't really giving you practical experience about what your accounting system might actually look like. And so we created a resource called Learn SQL that hopefully will give you some of the resources necessary to be able to learn how to actually work with cloud databases. 
And uh, these are free, they're publicly available. You can use them yourself. You can uh, uh, share these with your colleagues and more. Um, we're just hoping to get the word out and get people to actually use it. Now, there's actually two different data sets that we've got set up. We've got one using a Microsoft SQL Server, and then we've got another one using a MySQL Server. And the idea is that you get different skills depending on which, uh, on which database you're working with here. Okay. Here are the credentials for accessing this and uh, a little bit of information with respect to how this actually uh, works. Okay. Uh, now, what this is, it's is actually a publicly usable database. And what this database actually provides you, it gives you a playground where you can learn how to work with cloud accounting data. Um, you can use this service with Power Query inside of Excel. You can use this inside of Power BI. You can use this with Power Automate. You can use this with Zapier. Lots of different services that you can use. And what it has is it has uh, about six, seven different databases. I actually just added one over the weekend, Sage 100, that have factual examples of what a QuickBooks desktop database looks like, what a QuickBooks online database looks like, Sage 100 and more. And if there's a specific accounting system you're interested in, I'm opening to adding that as well. And what the idea is, is that you can use this tool and it will emulate what it feels like to actually go get cloud data. It'll give you the mechanics of how you actually access this data. And then we'll also give you the actual schema of the database that you can expect with QuickBooks. And you can do this without having to worry about causing issues in your own data. And you can also use this as a way of practicing things without, again, uh, having to ask IT for permissions. I personally would recommend you cut your teeth on utilizing this service. And then, you know, as you get a little bit more familiar and comfortable, you go and look to expand to your actual data set itself. So it is a, a new service. It will be upgraded from time to time. Um, but uh, any feedback you might have, you're more than welcome to provide to us. OK, and I've got some um, inf insight here with respect to how you can access uh, this data and uh, what this ultimately ends up looking like. Um, but if you'd like, you can take a copy of our presentation here. And from this actual presentation, um, you can um, just reference this so that you can learn a little bit more about where and how um, you would access our cloud data set. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to, inside of Power BI, just show you a couple of examples practically of how you might want to use this tool and show you how you ultimately can connect to it. Okay. All right, just give me one second here. All righty, and if you'd like to follow along, you're more than welcome to do so. I encourage, in fact, I encourage it. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to a clean Power BI desktop. Okay, so we're here inside of a clean Power BI desktop that's never been used before. Uh, now, you're most likely working with cloud data. The cool thing about working with cloud data is, is that you can access this information even um, from your desktop using the Power BI desktop. And then also when you publish this data up to the cloud, it will also be available inside of the Power BI cloud. It will be refreshable and repeatable. Uh, I will tell you that if you're planning on using something like a data gateway or you're going to use on-premise data, you want to get all that worked out before you actually start to do your visualizations. Uh, the reason being is that it can be quite difficult to change your data sources once you've already got your report set up and often you're going to have to recreate them. So honestly, get your data right and then go ahead and start working with your uh, visualizations. But get the data in the system first. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to Get Data. And from this Get Data, we're going to go ahead and choose SQL Server. And I could also just click this little button right here and that would have launched this up as well. But you could use the SQL Server database and you could also utilize the MySQL. Both of these options work. They demonstrate different skill sets. I'll talk more about the MySQL one here in a minute, but if you're looking to just basically get going here, try this SQL Server one. This is gonna be the easier of those two approaches. When you go to connect to your actual cloud data, you're gonna to need to know three things, okay? Where you're connecting, uh, your username and your password. So those are the three bits you need, which is basically the base authentication information with this. 
And we're going to come on over here. We're going to go ahead and drop in uh, learnsql.cpetoday.com. Our username is going to be CPE today. And then our password is going to be learn with us today with an exclamation mark. Now, what's kind of cool about utilizing this compared to access is that you can also get and try different things. Uh, when you import the data in from access, you're only using the import method. Here, we can use the direct query method. The direct query method, as discussed in the book, allows for you to be able to uh, directly query that data. It's a more of a real-time way of being able to access data. Uh, so I'll just point out that this will demonstrate other skills that you could potentially utilize. You can also come down here and you could write your own select statement. As I mentioned, this is like the, scal the scalpel approach of being able to get exactly the data you're looking for. And you just go ahead and you could write that in here. Okay, for our purposes here, we're gonna go ahead and just use the import method, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and click okay. And when it goes to connect out, it's gonna ask you for a username and password if you've never connected to this data source before. That's pretty common. Um, you're just gonna go ahead and choose what's called SQL authentication, or in this case, sorry, database authentication. And you're gonna go ahead and put in your username, which is CPE today. And you're gonna go ahead and drop in that password, which is learn with us today with an exclamation mark. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's gonna pop up saying, hey, we're unable to encrypt it. The data is actually encrypted. I can't understand why Microsoft is showing this error. I'll point out, this is all sample data, so there's nothing to worry about here. If you're, when you go to start working with your organization's data, you absolutely 1000% wanna make sure that that data is encrypted when you're moving things to and from the cloud uh, to prevent things like data breaches or data leakage or something like that. But for our purposes here, this is fine. It actually is encrypted, but for whatever reason, it's not showing that way. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And what it's gonna present, it's gonna connect exactly the same way everything in Power Query connects. It's gonna present with us a, um, it's going to present a listing of our databases. Try that one more time. That should be right. Okay, hopefully that pops up here. If not, we'll just go ahead and try this in Excel. But I don't know why that wouldn't pop up here. Let me try this in Excel real quick. I did this demo yesterday. Okay, give me one second. Yeah, it's working over here on my other screen. Let's try this. I could show you the same thing inside of Excel, okay? We'll come on over here to our data tab and same thing, we're gonna go ahead and select get data from database and the SQL server. Learn sql.cpetoday.com. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay here. And yeah, it pops up. So I'm not exactly sure why that's not popping up here. Let's see, let's double check this, make sure that this is actually putting in the right password learn with us today yeah that's the password let's try that one more time sql server learn sql.cpetoday.com okay wait was i doing that over here or a database i think i was doing that cp today Drop that in, connect, yes. Well, there you go. I, I honestly couldn't tell you what the heck that was, but uh, it's getting towards the end of the day, so maybe the computer doesn't want to work as much as it, uh, as it should. Hey, what this is going to show you inside of uh, uh, Power Query is a listing of all the databases that we have available. And so there's simple databases, like a good example, this classic models, it's like a car rental. And so I've got some examples here of offices, employee data, payment data, order data. If we come down here, we've got exact replicas of QuickBooks Desktop. So if you wanted to learn how to do reporting out of QuickBooks Desktop for your organization inside of Power BI, this is exactly what it's gonna look like for you. 
Uh, likewise, if you came over here to QBO, Sage 100, or uh, the likes. In fact, our Costco database that we've been working with right here, well, this is the whole thing. You know, this is this entire uh, data set that you could ultimately end up working with. Okay, there's a couple really simple manufacturing, sales, and more. All of those are going to be listed here, and you can go ahead and pull those in. Uh, likewise, Northwind database, pretty comprehensive. You've got employees, invoices, order details, and the like. They're all they're all listed here as well. So um, if you're looking to learn how to leverage QB, uh, QBO, QBD, Sage 100, or any of these things, ultimately learning how to work with the database is going to be a really, really useful uh, tool to be able to have. Okay, so just I wanted to make this aware to you that you could ultimately use this database and the mechanics of this are going to be exactly the same as if you were to go work inside of your accounting system. Now, the other thing I wanted to draw your attention to is how do you get access to QuickBooks Desktop? How do you get access to Acumatica? How do you get access to XYC system that you're utilizing? Okay, ultimately, you're going to be using a tool that will query the data for you. Okay, a lot of different tools do this. Uh, if anybody here, anybody here using QuickBooks Enterprise as an example, I'm not sure if you are or not. Okay, some companies, for example, like uh, QuickBooks Enterprise, Okay, will come with a thing called a ODBC driver, Open Database Connectivity. Now, unfortunately, this only comes from, um, this is only included in the enterprise version of QuickBooks. And unfortunately, it's only a 32-bit driver. Um, it's not the best, but hey, here's, here's where we are. Um, but, you know, like in QuickBooks case, Sage 100 also comes with its own driver. You can leverage those existing drivers to be able to access your data. However, if you don't, there's another company um, use those tools. Let's say you're using a different accounting tool. There are other companies that make drivers. One such company is this company called CData. And CData makes connectors out to a lot of really commonly used accounting systems. Uh, so if you come over here to cdata.com and you click over here to connectors, you can come over here to browse connectors by category. And from this, this is going to be where you can look at some of the different connectors to different products and services that are out there. If you come over here to accounting, this is going to be where you could find the 64 bit version of the QuickBooks connector, which is going to be the one I'm going to encourage you to use. OK, uh, you could find a connector to SAP. Uh, you could find a connector to ADP, Sage 200, uh, Zoho Books, Zero. If we click over here to CRM and ERP, these are going to be your bigger solutions, including things like Acumatica, Dynamics 365, NetSuite, Odo, Salesforce, CH300, and more. Uh, so you're not just limited. The takeaway is you're not just limited to the connectors that Power BI has inside of its Get Data. Um, these are free. These are certainly available. But in reality, you're probably going to need some stuff that's not supported directly by Microsoft. And this is where these connectors come in play. So if you're using SAP Business by Design, CData makes a tool that Power BI can read to be able to extract that data and be able to pull it into um, Power BI for reporting purposes. And they've got some really good articles on how you can leverage and utilize their platform. Um, you know, and it'll talk through, for example, how to connect it to Microsoft Excel, how to connect it to whatever product that you ultimately end up using here. OK. And so um, this is the tool that you're ultimately going to end up using. And it'll even give you a little screenshot here of what the table structure ultimately that you can expect to work with. Um, but this is what I've emulated with our data uh, source here, our sample servers, giving you the opportunity now to be able to connect to this COD data, to go through the mechanics of what it feels like to actually pull down that data without actually having to go and incur money and time to get this properly set up. Okay. Now, these tools, these tools from CData or from QODBC or any of them ultimately are going to allow you to be able to extract the data from where it lives, make it available through ODBC and then ultimately make it available to Power BI, Excel, or really kind of anywhere else. So if you want to check that out, I provided the Learn SQL resources here. This is a great way to get started in learning how to connect um, and what the mechanics of that would actually feel like inside of your organization. Okay, now 
for the Learn SQL service, there's two ways of connecting to it. The, the MS SQL, just one click works. Uh, there's also another method here utilizing that ODBC connection. This particular method is going to be more reflective of what it'll actually end up looking like for you when you go to do this for realsies inside of your business. All right, folks, we got a couple minutes left here. Let's go ahead and just kind of talk through maybe some final things that I think are useful for you to be able to know um, with respect, some kind of parting thoughts, if you will. Uh, we've done a pretty good job. We've covered pretty much everything I think you should know with respect to Power BI. But there are a couple things I think I'm probably going to go ahead and just finish with, give you a little bit of insight for us to be able to wrap up on. Just some odds and ends, if you will. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to respond. Okay, so with Power BI or any business intelligence solution, the visualization is the last part of the project. Uh, it's always about the data. This is the unfun part of working with business intelligence. But if you don't get the data right, it is going to really cause issues for you later on. Okay, so first and foremost, make sure your database is reliable. Make sure that the data coming out of it is consistent. Um, make sure you get the same response when you ask the same question, that you don't get two responses that are different. Make sure the data is reliable, okay? You should have different types of data that you can work with. You have fact tables and you have dimension tables. Fact tables are the tables that are gonna contain numeric data. In our case, it was literally called fact sales. And then we had other dimensional data like our uh, products and our subcategories and our dates, all ultimately defining and providing some analysis related to that table. Uh, but um, they're different, okay? Uh, so your fact tables, make sure they have reliable math, make sure they have you know dates and they have times and they have sales amount and cost amounts. Those are gonna be the things that you're gonna do your reporting on. Those dimension tables though are gonna be the ways that you summarize that information. Okay, and so the more dimensional data that you have, the better, the more demographic data, customer data, sales data, uh, cost data, so on and so forth are really uh, gonna help you out. Now, when you go to lay out your data, there's lots of different ways that you can orient to your data. As I mentioned, I try to have a center, like kind of my main thing, in this case, the sales table for your business. It might be the general ledger table, it might be the order table, it might be uh, the invoice table. It's hard to know until you actually work with that data itself, okay? But there are what we call star and then ultimately snowflake um, schemas, okay? Now, the star schema is preferable, in my opinion. Uh, you put your thing that you ultimately need right in the middle, and then you have no more than one or two jumps to get to summary information that you want. Um, often, we have to do pre-processing to get our data correct uh, and summarized and available for us to use. But this is kind of what we're ultimately going for here, is that we've got one or two fact tables, and then these dimension tables, as closely as we possibly can, can summarize directly to our um the thing that we're doing, the math operation. Now, we also have what we call snowflakes, okay? Uh, basically here, we've got daisy chain tables. This describes this, which describes this, which describes this. Uh, generally, these daisy chain approach, I mean, they're really slow and they also present reliability issues. Whenever possible, it's gonna give you better performance to follow that star schema. And uh, this is gonna result in having fewer joins between the different parts of your data set. Ultimately, your queries and calculations are going to run faster in that star environment. And that star schema is going to be easier to modify and extend compared to that snowflake uh, schema that you're working with here. Now, I mentioned this briefly. You could either use direct query or import. Okay. So what are the differences between here? With the import, you're importing all the data from power uh, from your resource, from your database, from your spreadsheet, uh, directly into Power BI, okay? Uh, with respect to this, like when we import stuff from our data set, from our Excel workbook or whatever we're operating in here, ultimately when we use the import method, it is physically copying that data directly from that data source and dumping it directly into Power BI. This is fine for small quantities of data, uh, but it's not really going to be useful for big quantities of data. Additionally, if you're on the free account, you're only going to be limited to one gigabyte. And even on the big account, you're limited to 10 gigabytes. And in the world of large and big data sets, not a lot of data to work with. 
Okay, your data is also gonna be periodically refreshed instead of live. Your other option is direct query. Uh, the big difference here is the data is queried um, on demand. So anytime things get updated or refreshed, it's going and grabbing the most recent copy. And so it's always in real time. And this is really useful when we're working with large data sets because it will um, allow you to only get the data that you need. You don't have to copy the entire data set in. It's actually more efficient than the import method in that way. Okay, import is the default option. But inside of your schema settings, you can also change this from the import method to the direct query method. And there's also a dual method too, which is a pretty nifty method for balancing between import and direct query. And Power BI will make the decision on what makes more sense on to direct query this or import this. And uh, it's a better method because the software knows better than you or me or on what method is gonna be the most performance. Uh, it's gonna give the best performance. Now, there's another topic here we call Power, Gate, Power BI Data Gateways. And these are one of the least understood things about Power BI. And I mentioned with Power BI, which kind of separates it from other business intelligence tools, that if we have on-premise data, we can actually access this using Power BI. We can use it for reporting purposes. And that Power BI Data Gateway will connect whatever is in office with the Power BI Cloud, making it available for reporting purposes. But it's not always necessary. Okay, you, you only need the Power BI data gateway when you're connecting a local data source to the Power BI service. You don't have to use the data gateway between local data and your local Power BI desktop. So if you're doing all of this just locally, no need for the data gateway. And you also don't need to use this if you need to maintain a link between cloud-based data and the Power BI dot com service um, this specifically speaks to the connectors like the qbo connector or the google analytics connector or the salesforce connector um, if you're still using a sql server and it's still behind a firewall you're still going to need a data gateway to or, or, need, or in order to be able to make that work there are two different types of gate, data gateways uh, you have a personal gateway which is what you're going to use for your projects here and when it comes time to maybe su uh, support additional users that might be utilizing our service, we're gonna use what's called an enterprise gateway. And uh, this is 100% required for multiple users. And what's also kind of cool is it supports both the import and direct query method. And you can also use this exact same data gateway with your, um, you can use this exact same data gateway with Power Automate. So if you're looking to do automation, um, you can do some pretty cool stuff in there as well. Uh, utilizing um, that same data gateway service. And you can download that data gateway for free right from Microsoft. These are really complicated. I shouldn't say really complicated. They're more complicated than the standard stuff. And um, frankly, I would tell you to master writing reports, creating some different dashboards, figure out how to use DAX, learn how to use calculated measures, calculated columns. And then honestly, you're gonna refactor your report at least three or four times, then come back and figure out how to do the data gateway. Don't, don't put the cart before the horse here. It's gonna take a fair amount of time to uh, be able to understand and, and um, leverage, okay? All right, folks, that does bring us roughly to the end of our presentation. Let's just go ahead and summarize this in about the five minutes that we have left here. And uh, let's go ahead and put up our last polling question. Well, so I would tell you in all industries, pretty much there's a need for better reporting, better knowledge, better information gathering. Uh, business intelligence is wonderful because it allows us to be pretty able to produce reports, dashboards, graphs, maps, you name it, on all different types of information. Uh, with Power BI, with business intelligence, we can take data and we can visualize it any way we want. Ultimately, we're here to help our businesses make better decisions, data-driven decision-making. We're not gonna be confined to the same limitations that we've always had with respect to financial statement reporting. We don't have to follow the format for a balance sheet or an income statement. We can make it look any way we want. We can also mash up our financial outcome data with our operational data, payroll data versus financial data, operational data versus social media data, or open rates on our email newsletter and more. The question you should be asking yourself is what tools should we be using to build these dashboards and provide business analytics? Okay, you could totally use Excel for these dashboards. As we talked about, you can use Power Query, you can use Microsoft uh, uh, Power Pivot. Um, 
these approaches have their limitations, usually around sharing and dissemination of this information. And there could be other issues too, like, you know, for example, lack of consensus on how to measure things, manual processes to getting these things updated and more. But, you know, thankfully, a lot of those problems have gone away in the last couple of years. Now, there are a lot of really good tools. Okay, Power BI definitely is the one that I'm presenting and definitely the one I would encourage you to look at. Other tools include Click and Tableau, all really good options here. Okay, affordable. There's features and functions for all size business. They're great interactive. They're great, they're great for collaboration and more. Uh, they provide access mobily, both on our mobile phones as well as on mobile desktops using the cloud services. And before choosing a solution, check them all out. I mean, they all have trials, which is nice. Uh, Click and Power BI are free, so there's really no upfront cost getting started there. Tableau, you can just get a trial and see if it works for you. And ultimately, we're trying to figure out what fills will help, what tools will help fill the voids in your reporting process. Okay, this is fun. Or at least it's fun for me. I enjoy this kind of stuff. Uh, I would tell you get started with creating just some simple reports and dashboards. You can start layering on the sophistication. I will point out these tools have gotten 10 times better in the last two, three years than they were five, six years ago. It's much simpler, much more approachable now. Um, you can add and, and layer in so much, so much nuance and, and sophistication uh, to your reporting. And so uh, hopefully you've learned, you know, some of the main ways that you can get started here uh, with Power BI. I've tried to provide a number of resources, sample data and more. And uh, hopefully you've got some great ways of getting started in your organization. And so get started. You know, it's never too late to, to get rolling with this and to learn some different ways that you can uh, provide better reporting to your organization. Now, finally, as a reminder, a lot of the stuff I've covered here, I've done for episodes for free on the CPE Today podcast. You can check that out 100% for free. Go to k2e.com forward slash podcast. You can search our archive. We've done over 100 episodes, done at least six or seven on business intelligence. I personally would recommend that you check out our database basics for financial professionals. It's going to curb and round out a lot of the training and thought that we've talked around keys, relationships, that kind of stuff, and give you enough fundamental knowledge to hopefully kind of make all this stuff make sense. Uh, we do new episodes twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific. You can watch and listen for free. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you happen to receive your content. Um, so please consider checking it out. If you have any questions or comments on today, I'd love to know what they are. Uh, please consider reaching out to me at any point in the future. I love hearing from people. It's one of my absolute favorite things to do. And uh, you can go ahead and shoot me an email at steve.yas at k2e.com. Uh, if there's anything I can do or, or provide better insight or answers for you as well, uh, I'm your guy. So just feel free to reach out at any point. And also, please remember to complete the evaluation. Love to know what you thought of today's course. If there's things you think we can improve upon, love to know what they are. If uh, if you uh, have any insight, I read every one of them, as well as the partners at K2 and the state societies. And they have a big impact on who's asked back in future years and who teaches what classes. So please let us know what you think. I think I have the greatest job in the world. I couldn't do it without you nice folks uh, attending. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy lives to be and learn. Be with me here today and learn with me here today. I really greatly, greatly appreciate your time. So hope to see you back in the class sometime soon. Best wishes and good luck to you all. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for attending our presentation and podcast for today. As a reminder, you can check out cpetoday.com for all your continuing education needs. We have courses on every topic you can think of from accounting to audit to ethics and regulation and more. Everything you need to know to stay relevant, current, and up to date with the profession. Again, check out cpetoday.com. If you're a new watcher or listener to the CPE Today podcast, again, we offer you a free course and a free credit for you to try our services. Pick the podcast of your choosing and use coupon code one free podcast at checkout to make that purchase free. If you enjoyed our presentation, please consider connecting with us on social media and let us know what you think. You can find us just about everywhere at CPE today, uh, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. And please consider subscribing to us wherever you happen to receive your content. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and others. 
We'd love for you to leave a review and let us know what you think. It helps new listeners and watchers find our course and content. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for being in the office, and we look forward to seeing you back here soon. Take care.